let it not be me speaking but you speak directly from your throne of grace father let us gain that which you want us to gain today lord let chains be broken let signs and wonders be prevalent in the house for in jesus precious and mighty name we pray before we sit down yesterday or was the birthday of our lord jesus christ so let's give the lord a round of applause let us wish him a happy birthday Happy birthday to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, to Jehovah Shama, to Jehovah Nisi, to the Arafa. We may seated in God's wonderful presence. Praise the Lord. I thank the pastorates and the leadership for the opportunity to be here today. I do not take it lightly, especially, you know, when we are having the Thanksgiving service for our Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of us, you know, always think about Christmas, about when, when we are getting our new clothes, getting you know, turkeys and chickens and celebrating. But we always, you know, we often forget to celebrate the reason for the season, and that is Jesus Christ. And that is the reason why we are all here. Praise the Lord. I thank my father, my physical and father in the Lord, uh, the senior pastor, and all our daddies in the house. I thank my uncle and my cousins and all the family members for being here today. Uh, Today, we are going to be talking about a topic I call your life as a positive life-changing testimony in your environment praise the lord this is week 51 out of 52 by now if this was a school you'll be you'd have written your final exams and you'll be waiting for your results an assessment of how you have done so now i ask you all to assess yourselves assess your lives how have you done in this year 2021 Has your life been a positive, life-changing testimony in your environment? Have you made an impact? Or are you someone that has passed and nobody noticed? Who are you, especially as a Christian? What have you done and what will you do? Praise the Lord. Your life can be a story. If you look at the Old Testament, you see A begot B and B begot C and C was the father of D and D begot F. And F had five children, J-E-H-I-P-Q-N, praise the Lord. So your life can be a story. Now, your life can also be a testimony. Do you remember the story of Rahab? Rahab the harlot in the Bible? Rahab did some things and she had a few verses in the Bible where they mentioned her. She helped out the children of God who came in and because of that, God spared her and God helped her. Her life was a testimony, a prostitute who came into the lineage of our Lord. Now, your life can also have a life-changing impact. Look at the lives of David, look at the lives of Samuel, and look at the life of Jesus. How many chapters in our scripture will you see the name of David mentioned? You will see it left, right, and center. David this, David this, son of this, son of David. Even Jesus Christ, when he was going to come forth, so he came from, he's the son of David, from son of David. So David's life, had a life-changing impact. If you look at the life of Samuel also, not because my name is Samuel, but, you know, I had to use that particular name. But Samuel was someone that had so much impact that kings, not just within the country, but outside of the country, knew that there was someone there. Uh, It it reminds me of Pastor Adeboye. Um, I remember a few years ago in England, Pastor Adeboye was going to minister at his annual, you know the way they have, uh, what do you call their convention every year? Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost Con- Congress. They have something similar that they do in the, in the UK. And 100,000 people attend. And the Prime Minister of England wanted to go for election. And because he knew how influential Pastor Debo was, the Prime Minister came to redeem to, for Pastor Debo to pray for him and to speak to the black people. When the Prince of England, that's the next King of England, wanted to celebrate his birthday, that is Prince Charles. He celebrated it in the redeemed Christian Church of God. So when I say, oh, let's give the Lord a round of applause. So there are people that are like you and I, you know, from our own, I don't want to say generation, from our own locality, who God has already made life-changing testimonies. Praise the Lord. And I pray that each and every one of us here will become a life-changing testimony in the name of Jesus. So now, I don't think your inspiration should become to be a story or a testimony. But a combination of the three. A story that is a life-changing testimony. Praise the Lord. In science, they talk about environmental impact assessment. That means we should look at the impact of what somebody is doing in that area. 
if I'm digging this road, what is the impact? It means that, okay, when rain falls, the gutter will become blocked up. You know, I'm not a science person, I'm a lawyer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, environmental impact assessment looks at the impact of a certain activity in its environment. What is the environmental impact of Jesus? 2021 years later, people all around the world, 4 billion people and counting currently, are in churches right now celebrating the life of somebody who lived over 2,000 years ago. The testament of his life is the most published book in the world. Who has a greater impact than Jesus? Let's give him a round of applause. Now, let's come closer to home for the young people. How many of you have heard of Davido? Davido, do we remember what happened last month when it was his birthday? This young man came and said, if you are my friend, I've opened a brand new bank account. Send me one one million naira. And like play, like play, 200 people sent one 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 million naira. And he raised 200 million. But because of the way God had blessed him, he came out and said, I thank you all my friends for this 200 million. I'm adding 50 million naira on top and I'm donating this 250 million to charities around. What is the point I'm bringing out? He had made such an impact in the life of people, in in the life of his friends, that those that had 1.5 million were still comfortable to remove 1 million out of it to give him. And you can see the impact he has on the youth, on the industry today. My favorite scripture is Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. It reads, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Don't forget the topic. Your life your life has a life-changing testimony in your environment. So what is a testimony? Testimony is the evidence or proof of something. In law, it is a formal written or spoken statement, especially one given in a court of law. So that scripture says, let your light so shine. Let your testimony be heard. When your light is shining, your testimony is being heard. People are seeing what you are saying. Hmm? I didn't say hearing, I said they are seeing it because what you say is your light and people can hear it also and they can see it let it be heard far and wide some people don't like sharing testimonies because of the unique circumstances of our environment you go and share a testimony and somebody will go to one baba somewhere and say ah, go to share a testimony you know, let's, let's yeah, this is picture, let us, you know but you should trust the God you serve the God of overcomers, the God of CIA. Praise the Lord. You know, I won't say share your testimony anyhow. I will, share, I will say share it when it is right. Don't share your testimony before it is not, before it is ripe. If you share a ripe testimony, somebody will kill it. You know, so you wait for your testimony to mature and then you share it. But when it has matured, that the whole world can see, they cannot kill it again. It's like you take a fire and you cover it with baskets. The light will still come out. Praise the Lord. When the Lord has given you that mature testimony, the Bible says, let your testimony be heard. Let your light so shine. It is that light that would shine on the people in darkness that they will be saved from that kingdom of the enemy. Praise the Lord. So, let your life be a testament. Let your life be evidence. Evidence. So, the next question I will ask now, evidence of what? Is it evidence of Nigeria? Is he evidence of sapa? Is he evidence of money? Is he evidence of wealth? Is he evidence of health? What is your life an evidence of? Because you can say, oh, evidence of good living. Is that what you want your life to be evidence of? As a Christian, as a child of God, you are supposed to, your life is supposed to be evidence of your Christ-like nature. First John chapter 2, verse 6 says, Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So you are supposed to walk in the footsteps of Christ. 1 Peter 2.21 says, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. There's no ambiguity here. God has laid down clear-cut instructions as to what you should do and how you will do it. He's not a bad father. God does not just want you to be lost and confused. He has said, follow my footsteps. When things are going wrong in the office, in the work, wherever it is, follow my footsteps. WWJD, what will Jesus do? Follow my footsteps. So, 
your life. He said, John 14, 15 says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. How do you follow his footsteps? You keep his what? His commandments. Praise the Lord. So, we're talking about evidence of God and his works in your life. Evidence of your good works. The works of Christ through you to the world. So, when we say your good works, I'm not talking about how many people you fed on Christmas Day. I'm talking about the works of Christ through you. Because even feeding people on Christmas Day, if your hand is not working, can you give anybody food? So you can't even assume that any work is your own. Praise the Lord. So now, the first thing is evidence of God and his work in your life. Now, the other one is evidence of redemption. Evidence of redemption. Hebrews 9.12 says, He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and cows, but he entered the most holy place once and for all, won by his blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. God is telling you through the scripture that he has forgiven all your sins. He has gone before the throne of grace. You know, in the past, in those days, you know the wages of sins, what? Is death. So when you sin, you die. So for your own death to be averted, you know, when God saw the amount of sin, he allowed there to be blood of animals because blood must be shed when you sin. So the blood of animals now had to be to replace your own blood so you will not die. So you commit sin today, we we'll kill an animal. You commit sin tomorrow, we we'll kill an animal. But the Son of the Most High God, the Word of God who became flesh, decided to come down to this planet Earth and he paid the ultimate sacrifice. His blood that spoke louder than any goat or calf was shed on behalf of you that had not even been born. That is the message of redemption. Your life is supposed to be an evidence of redemption. Even though you are not born, born again, but the moment you became born again, people are supposed to see that redemption evident in your life. Praise the Lord. Let your life be a testament. He gave clear instructions. How is your life a testament? Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20. Then the 11 disciples went away to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. That is the essence of a Christian in this 21st century. Those four verses I have read. He said, All authority has been given to me. Where? Where? In heaven and where? And on earth. Praise the Lord. Dominion. He gave us the keys of dominion. Dominion is the Lord. This is his domain and you are heirs of God. Nobody should be able to hold you down. You are the son of the owner. Imagine if Yusuf Buhari walks in here. They've turbaned him. He has Taliban Daura as his title because he's the son of the president. Now you are the son of the king of kings. You are a daughter of his most high excellency. The divine excellency, Jehovah Jireh. And you are not exhibiting dominion. Your life as a life-changing testimony. How can your life be a testimony if you don't have dominion? Dominion in the office. When you talk, who is listening? As a child with dominion, your boss will ask you, eh, Samuel, what do you think about this? He's your guy, but he will ask you. When you have dominion, it doesn't matter your position. From the prison, they will come and find you. God gave Joseph that spirit of dominion. And when it was time for him to shine, they went to bring him from the Kirikiri maximum prison of those days. And he came to become the prime minister. Dominion. That dominion was first spiritual before it became physical. Are you taking your spiritual dominion? Are you taking your physical dominion? Praise the Lord. Look at the Living Faith Church. I like that man of God, Bishop David Oedepo. Have you seen him speak? When he speaks, you see a man that speaks with authority. He would, just, he, would, he would just do his voice like this. And da, 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 you know, but he will speak. And you see, when he speaks, things happen. They built their church without collecting one penny of loan. He believed that dominion. He manifested that dominion into reality. Praise the Lord. The dominion mandates that they say liberation and dominion. Dominion liberates. If you have dominion, that means you have control. Someone that has control is not held down. So for you to be to have dominion, that means you are free. So dominion automatically equates to freedom. Praise the Lord. So for as many as are here, who the Lord is giving dominion, receive your freedom today in the name of Jesus. This Matthew uh, 28, 16 to 20 we read, also speaks to priesthood and leadership. 
the order of Melchizedek. If we see that scripture, he said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Praise the Lord. Now, that order of Melchizedek, Genesis 14, 18 says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. He was the priest, thank you, not a priest. Praise the Lord. I know a lot of us here went to school. You know the difference between A and D? If they say, this is a king, and they say, this is the king, what does it mean? It means that the king is the superior king among them all. And Melchizedek was not just a priest, he was also a king. He was the king of Salem. Praise the Lord. So, God has called us to this priesthood and kingship. He has called us to leadership. So, when you are a child of God, God has given you dominion and he has told you that he has given you this physical dominion. He's also giving you spiritual control of wherever, whichever situation you find yourself. You are the priest of God. You are also the king of that place. He said, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. Teaching the word. Teaching the gospel of Christ. We are talking about how your life is a positive, life-changing testimony in your environment. Teaching the word of Christ. Teaching the gospel. What is this gospel? What is this gospel? When you ask a lot of Christians, they say the gospel is the word of God. But when you try and dig, dig, you know, you dig, you dig deeper, they can't answer. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Have it to the fullest. So the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And God has brought life abundantly to neutralize the effects of the devil. The devil has told you once and once. He has come to kill you. He has come to destroy you. He has come to steal from you. And God said, see, Modakwada. Holy Spirit Odeshi. You know Odeshi? God gave you a supernatural Odeshi that no juju can penetrate. Praise the Lord. I can't hear you louder. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, God has brought that message of deliverance. He said, life abundantly. Salvation. He didn't say adequate life. He said abundant life. God does not want you to be comfortable. I know some people will pray to forget money, forget this, forget that. I'm not preaching the message of salvation here. But I'm preaching the gospel of Christ here. And he said he wants you to have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus Christ was not poor. Jesus Christ did not care about money, but he was not poor. Jesus Christ, the day he wanted to ride the Rolls Royce of his days, which was a brand new donkey, they went to bring it for him. When he wanted to pay his taxes, the fish opened mouth and money came out. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus Christ was not poor. And you, as a Christ-like person, you are not permitted to be poor. Praise the Lord. So if there's anybody that considers themselves poor or below average, today as you believe in the word of God, the Lord is elevating you in Jesus' name. You will leave Sakma behind in 2021 in Jesus' name. I can hear some loud amens and God is doing it for them. Praise the Lord. So our testimony, the testimony of Jesus is a testament of the life, the efficacy and the power of the name and person of Jesus Christ. Through preaching, through speaking, miracles and our lives. A lot of people think that when we talk about preaching, that we're saying just, uh, oh, 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 you know, talking about, oh, you have to go and carry bell. Give your life, give your life, give your life. We're not talking about that. We're talking about your life being an example also. Praise the Lord. What do people say about you? If you are accused, how many people will speak for you? If I call uh, my brother a lot, and they say that, uh, God forbid, he has been accused of theft or murder, how many people will rush down to the police station and say it's not possible? Pastor, I will raise his hand. Senior pastor will raise his hand. Everybody will raise, I will raise my hand. I will say, my brother Alat cannot steal. I will, testif- I will testify on his behalf because I know his nature. Now, as a Christian, is your nature Christ-like? Can people say, truly, truly, oh, this person cannot do this? When you die, what will the epitaph on your gravestone read? Will it say, here lies a man who walked like Christ? Or here lies a man who liked Hennekin and Guinness? 
or here lies a man who had 35 billion in his account what will be the story of your life at the end of the day how heavy will your coffin be a preacher once said he wants his coffin to be light because he would have used his entire essence for jesus christ he would have given his all everything to jesus christ so his coffin should be very light so will your coffin be light or will it be empty or will all the blessings and the anointing and talents that god has kept in you just be in your dead body or will it have translated and gone ahead of you to prepare those mansions for you in our father's house think about it your life as a positive life changing testimony in your environment it is the will of god that you have a testimony and that, that testimony is life-changing when you say it's life-changing it is visible for all to see a blind man beside you will be seen say what is that i can see some lightness a blind man will see it a deaf person will hear it hmm? are you telling me that deaf people don't know dango day or ten dollar they will know even if it is through the sign language they will know but when your life eh, the testimony of your life defies uh, disability that even with disability they know of you you know that kind of testimony that is the testimony that you all will get in Jesus name he says in Philippians 4 19 for the Lord shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus some people most people interpret it that the Lord shall supply some of your needs but I put it to you today that God is saying he will supply all each and every one of your needs you will not lack he will not allow you to fall. His angels will catch you. As a child of dominion, as a heir of the kingdom, as a prince of heaven, you have bodyguard of angels following you around. Even when you're about to enter the bus, the angels of the Lord, they are holding that conductor. Manifest it. Manifest it. You have to manifest it. When he wants to fight you for change, tell him, hmm, I'm a prince of God. You will give me my money. If he's not careful, he will give you his own too to join the Bible says you will inherit the wealth of the Gentiles. Praise the Lord. So you have to claim your dominion authority. Let your life be a testimony. Not just through your speech, but through your actions. If people come and see you in church, preaching the way I'm preaching, they say, ah, oh boy, don't ah, in the club, ah, would they, what would be their reaction? Or oh, they would say, yes, this is, this is, this is, yeah. Or will they say, okay, I want to be like this person? What is your life a testament of? And like I said, this is week 51 out of 52. But God is giving you one more chance. You have one more week. And the Lord, God of mercy that gave you redemption and forgiveness and salvation is giving you one week from today to next week Sunday, the last day of the year. And God will allow the good you will do in this week to wipe away all your inadequacies for the first 51 weeks in the name of Jesus. So is your life a testimony? Does your conduct bring people to Christ or does it push them away? Do people say, ah, look at this one and call himself a Christian. If that is Jesus, I don't want to follow. What is your life saying? What is your story saying? What is your storytelling? Think about it. Now, to the concluding part of the message, how can your life now become a life-changing testimony? If it has not been before, the Lord is giving you an opportunity. Praise the Lord. The first part, obey. 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 God bless you. Obey. Preach the gospel. Say with me, preach the gospel. Okay, I know how many people spoke. How many of you preached the gospel this past week? You will preach the gospel. God bless you. But know if you are lying, you are in the presence of God. <laughs> the preaching of the gospel is in serious decline. It is not in vogue or fashionable. If I say preach in the bus or in the BRT, you be like, how many of you preach in the office? There are some times that some religious things will come to your mind that you want to share. But you know if you share, you'll say, ah, all these SU people. You think about what the people will say. The preaching of the gospel is in decline. How many of you are bold enough to stand for this person you claim to be like? You are saying you are like him, but they are abusing him in your presence and you are keeping quiet. If they abuse your father or your mother, they say your mother is a bastard. Will you keep quiet? No. But when it's time to preach the gospel, you are keeping quiet. They are calling Jesus a bastard in your presence and you are afraid that what will they say about me? You care more about what they think about you. How many souls do you win for, for, for Christ? Still under obey, do you keep his doctrines? Do you keep the doctrines of Jesus Christ? Even I, 
that I'm standing here. I can't say I keep all the doctrines of Jesus Christ. If I do, I am lying. Nobody is perfect. But he has given us the grace to be perfect. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 48, for you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. We aim for it, we work towards it. So although you are not perfect, don't use your imperfection as an excuse to continue sinning because God has given you the grace to rise above sin. This word is an ammunition in the bullet. In that, it's a bullet in that gun God has given you to overcome life. You see, God has said, I should be perfect, even as my Father in heaven is perfect. I claim that perfection. I will not fall for this sin. Praise the Lord. Amen. Claim your perfection. Number two, pray. What did I say? Pray. What did I say? Pray. Battles are won in the strategy rooms, not on the battlefield. Praise the Lord. It is not when you get to the battlefield that commander will say, Oh yeah, come in. Eh, eh, okay, pass that side. Ah, they are there. Okay, come back, come back, come back. Oh, yeah, go. No. Any army that does not have strategy will fail. You know? The formation discussed and planned in the team room is what determines the victory or defeat of a team. All you Man you fans, I'm sorry for what happened with Ole or Ole or whatever you want to call him. But you could see that his strategy was not working. Am I right or am I right? His strategy was not working. So you have to get somebody else. Look at Raw. In Nigeria, we have to terminate his agreement and give him $6 million because his agreement was not, his, uh, was not working. Praise the Lord. Your strategy determines how you will get out. If Jesus Christ comes here and nobody knows, how many people will gain from Jesus? Nobody. So the people around Jesus have a strategy. They have a marketing strategy. Come oh, Jesus is here. So you have to pray. And prayer is your warfare room. It is your strategy room where God reveals things to you. He tells you the kind of method you are going to use on that task they gave you in the office. He tells you the road to pass when you are going to the office that there will be less hold up. He tells you who and who has bad plans for you. And he tells you where he wants you to go. Praise the Lord. So your prayer room is your warfare room. It is your strategy room. Praise the Lord. How many of us are praying? How many of us pray today apart from the church? Praise the Lord. People are praying, and as you pray, God will answer your prayers in Jesus' name. So now, we've spoken about praying for yourself. Now, we are talking about praying for people. How many of you pray for people, regardless of their reception towards us? Uh, a brother of mine in Abuja, he uh, works in the tax office, and one judge came, and the judge wanted to do kalu kalu to get her tax clearance. And he said, no man, if you don't bring your earnings, I can't give you. I said, you have marked your face. So after she tells you, a judge of the Federal High Court tells you you have marked your face, will you still pray for her? Well, you should pray for her. Praise the Lord. When we say a Christ-like person, as a Christ-like person, you you will overlook a lot of all these things that people do to you. Because you are not doing it for them, you are doing it for God. You are not like them, you are above them, you are a prince. If you abuse Prince Harry or Prince Charles, they will just look at you, look at this commoner, just, just, just... you are a child of God. Don't let any damnful driver cut in front of you and you start getting, hey, hey, I'm all, hey. Mm, no, 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 no. Praise the Lord. As a child of God, you are an overcomer. You are a king. A king cannot come down to that level. Praise the Lord. Are we praying for these people's salvation and change? We should pray for them. Now, the third one is practice. Practice. How many of us are practicing what we preach? It's one thing to say, it's another thing to do. How many people's lives match their spiritual CV? If I look at your spiritual CV, they'll say you have attended ABC uh, Bible School. You have gone to this program. You have gone for that program. You have been prayed by, for, by this person. So, 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 and so, bishop has ordained you. How much of it matches up with your lifestyle? Does your spiritual CV match your physical CV? It's not easy. It's not easy, I tell you the truth. Even I am still learning work. Praise the Lord. And God will help me in Jesus' name. Ah, you're not praying for me. God will help me in Jesus' name fruits of the spirit. Pray to God that he will imbibe, imbibe you with the fruits of the spirit. Now, next one is invest. Invest in your spiritual life. Malcolm Gladwell, in the bestseller series um, Outlier, the story of success, he opines that it takes 10,000 hours of practice to become an expert. If you need to be good in a trade, the more experience you have in it, the better you get. In law, we have Senior Advocate of Nigeria. You cannot graduate this year and become a senior advocate. You must have been practicing for 10 years and must have done a certain number of cases. In medicine, we have consultants. Eh? Am I right, doctor? We have consultants. 
So, in uh, teaching, we have professor. Someone that's finished from uh, teacher school today cannot become a professor today. So, it takes hours and hours of practice, you know, to get better. So, when we're talking about investment in relation to the word of God and the kingdom of heaven, I'm talking, I'm saying that you have to spend more time with God. You need to get to know him more. Can you talk about someone you don't know? There's a difference between having knowledge of somebody and knowing the person. I, I know that there's somebody called Aliko Dangote, but do I know Aliko Dangote? If they say, come and stand shorty for him in the court, come and be a witness for him in court, that he will not run away if he signs this $50 billion. Can you stand for him? No, because you don't know him. So how can you go and preach about God when you don't know God? You'll be preaching rubbish. Praise the Lord. Because you will say one scripture thinking you've said it and that person you're talking to knows five scriptures more than you and he says it and you begin to question your own Christianity. Praise the Lord. You need to become a character witness for Jesus Christ. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have to know the word of God. It is that knowledge of the word of God that becomes faith that you can now use for your day-to-day warfare. Now, given giving. What did I say? Giving. Sowing sacrificially. Second Corinthians 9, 7 says, each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Not reluctantly, for God loves a cheerful giver. He didn't say God likes a cheerful giver. He said God loves a cheerful giver. Give and it will be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Your money will be more than Abiola's own. Praise the Lord. He's not just giving money giving your time, giving your love, giving your resources. God loves a cheerful giver. God made the whole world and gave you. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, because my time is running out, I'll quickly run through the remaining. Consecration. You can become, your life can become a testimony when you are consecrated. A prisoner cannot contest in an election. He's disqualified. He's not part. A basket cannot carry water. Even matter how much water you put inside the basket, it will come out. If you are con- not concentrated, consecrated, you will have holes like a basket. You will be disqualified like a prisoner. A sinner will not car- carry anointing. He will just carry packaging. He can do all the robo rabba bike and come and speak and you will give, but he will not carry any anointing. There will be no difference. Praise the Lord. Consecration involves being set apart. It's not easy. Anybody that tells you it's easy is a liar. And this consecration is a major disqualification factor for most people's testimonies. Your life is supposed to be a testimony. But just at that last moment, when things are supposed to work, you see one fine girl that passes. And before you know it, as when the could say, one thing leads to something. And then from there, you know, that's how the testimony will be cut short. You will work for it. Anybody that tells you that living a Christ-like life is easy or being a testimony like Jesus is easy is a liar. Jesus had to die. So if you think that your own is going to be easy, it's not true. This is where the exam is. Exam cannot be easy. If exam is easy, then it's not an exam. You will work for it. Make hay while the sun shines. A lot of people find it hard to be consecrated because it involves your deliberate and your non-deliberate actions, your thoughts, your actions, and your behavior. It's easy to control what you say, but it's not easy to control what you do. So now you have to pray for grace to be able to control even your subconscious actions and your subconscious thoughts. This can only be achieved when God creates a new heart in, within you. Psalm 51 verse 10, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a loyal spirit within me. Can a non-holy vessel carry holiness? Matthew 9, 16 to 17 says, No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth onto an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wine skin. If they do, the skin will burst, the wine will run out, and the wine skin will be ruined. No, they pour new wine skin, new wine into new wine skin, and both are preserved. So I put it to you that without consecration, the anointing will just destroy you. It will burst like balloon. God does not tolerate sin. Consecration is a commandment. Leviticus 19.2 says, Speak to all the congregation of the sons of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord... I, I, the Lord your God, am holy. It is critical to take note of when God uses you as a testimony. Beware of the sin of pride. When God now makes your life a testimony, beware of the sin of pride. Second Corinthians 1, 21 to 22 says, Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership 
on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing us what is to come. If you look at that scripture, he's talking about what God has done for us. 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 All those things we claim are not our own claims. They're not our own um, doings. They are the works of God. So you have to remember that you're not operating from your own power. You're operating with his own power. And if you take a vacuum cleaner and you are cleaning the whole place and you move too far and the plug removes, what will happen? The vacuum cleaner will go off. Do not disconnect from the source. Praise the Lord. Continue to follow in his direction. Psalm 109, 115 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Can you drive without light on the Ted Milan Bridge? You enter Lagoon and join Mami Water. Ah. Driving without light. Sight is a critical component to vision. Vision births testimonies. It is when you have a vision that you think of something and God does it for you and becomes a testimony. And vision births those testimony and vision allow your testimony to continue. Now, a bonus point, which is the rounding point. And I would like the choir to help me out here. I would like the choir. God loves worship. Praise the Lord. God loves what? Worship. Psalm 22 verse 3 says, Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. The praises of Israel enthrones God. God loves worship. Your dance and worship will demolish mountains and remove obstacles. And as you sing this song with me, every obstacle in your life, every barrier, every yoke and chain will be broken. We're going to take a song, Fragrance to Fire by Dunsi Oyekon. Fragrance to Fire, please, may we be on our feet. It says, the fragrance of my worship goes up to the Father. Mm. Oh. The fragrance of my worship goes up to the Father. Noises, thunders, lightnings, where the rest wants to my worship. Ah, the fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father. No three standings that wakes where the rest wants to my worship. First it was fragrance, then it turns to fire. Shut up. My worship is my weapon. This is I win. This is I win my battle. So first it was fragrance.